This video is about making case studies as quickly and as painlessly as possible using ChatGPT and Perplexity AI. Case studies are the number one selling tool for large ticket services, but they can sometimes take months to create. I know this pain all too well as my marketing agency team and I have made tons of these over the years for some very large tech companies. I've distilled everything I've learned over those many years into a short prop sequence that'll churn out killer case studies with minimal time and minimal effort. This video covers everything from getting your client's permission to the number one easiest way to gather intel from your team, from your client, and even from your own brain. It also includes a super quick way to take all of that messy information and create case studies like this one. Following this sequence ensures that you're checking every box your prospective clients need to see in order to hire you. At the end of the video, I'll show you how to use AI to jam that draft full of additional research that will ensure your prospects cannot ignore it. I'll also cover ideas for designing the case study and even a prompt for promoting your new case study to your target audience. Let's dive in. It all starts with getting your client's permission and this is where most case studies die, frankly. Business owners are afraid to reach out and they don't know how to do that, so putting some of that heavy lifting onto ChatGPT can really be helpful. I start this prompt sequence with a very simple prompt, just asking ChatGPT to help you create a very short, informal message to your client about uh, the potential of a case study. You wanna keep this very short and sweet. This is just the shot across the bow. You don't wanna put too much in there to frighten them away or make them think in any way that this is going to take uh, a ton of their time. So this I think is perfect. Just a couple sentences here. You might want to add a little bit more, but not very much. Just, hey, are you interested in doing something like this? And then you ask if you can send them a little bit more information. From there, you can go back to ChatGPT and say, great, they're open to this opportunity. Can you please help me create a short informal follow-up requesting permission and including all of these different uh, cases for why they should be open to doing this case study with you. This includes the benefits, it includes addressing any concerns that they might have, it ends with the ask and at a bare minimum you're just going to need their permission to use their name. That's a bare minimum. One step above that would be a couple direct quotes. A step above that is a quick 20 to 30 minute call to discuss the project. ChatGPT comes back with a great email. Again, this is the second email in the sequence. You don't want to send this first because it could frighten them off. But if they say, yeah, I'm interested, you can say, hey, here are some of the benefits and all I really need is your permission. But if you want to jump on a quick call, that would be awesome. So these two simple ways of reaching out to your clients are really what's going to set this up for success. And I should mention that I have all of these prompts that we're going to go through today in a cheat sheet. There's a link in the description of this video to this cheat sheet. All of my Patreon subscribers get access to um, cheat sheets that I make for every single video. So you can just quickly and easily copy and paste all of these prompts directly into ChatGPT. After you've sent the details over to the client, you're going to have to follow up. So this is another thing that AIs like ChatGPT can be very helpful with. Just, hey, help me create a quick follow-up email and putting in the details there. And if you need to follow up a couple times, ChatGPT can really be helpful for just coming up with slightly different angles, slightly different <laughs> approaches to those follow-up messages because those can really, even though they're short, they can take some time and some brain energy and some emotional energy. So you want to offload that to ChatGPT as well. Here are some other ideas about getting this all important permission to create a case study. Obviously you can create an anonymous case study, but they're not nearly as impactful as getting your clients going on record and explaining why the project was such a success. So. You can offer these reassurances, allowing them to uh, review it. You can limit the scope. There's a lot of things you can do, uh, showing them some examples. So if you have some case studies, showing them, hey, I'm going to put paint you in a great light. Here's the professional quality of the end case study. Perhaps it's something they may even be able to circulate internally or have some other use for. So you can tell them, hey, this could get you some awareness and we all want to grow together. You may even say, offer some sort of free services, something extra that you can do for them in order to get permission to create a case study. 
Once you've got permission, now it's time to start gathering some intel. So this can be from your team. Here's a quick draft of a prompt here to ask your team to come up with some information about the case study. So help me draft a short and formal email to the team, letting them know that you're doing a case study and ask them to spend just a quick amount of time, 10 to 30 minutes, gathering all of the information that they have access to and emailing it back. These are the key components of the case study so details such as the name website etc problem challenge what they were trying to overcome any external factors such as market conditions etc the objectives and goals that were outlined solution details quantitative results qualitative results visual aids and implementation timelines so these map directly to some of the sections that your prospective clients are going to need to see in order to hire you so you want to ask the team to gather all that stuff, but you also may want to ask ChatGPT or whatever large language model you're using, whether that's Anthropics Claude or uh, any of the others, to do a self-interview. So using that same list of criteria there, I'm doing a case study on XYZ. Please ask me a few questions about the following aspects of the project in order to create a case study that will appeal to the ideal customer profile and help me win more projects similar to this one. So once you have a mess of information gathered from the team or maybe from your own interview with ChatGPT filling things out, you can just pump that right back in to ChatGPT. So using the following email replies, please draft a case study about the Healthful Juices digital marketing campaign. Obviously, that's the example we're going through today. Here are the email replies, and these are all from your internal team. We haven't involved the client yet. That's coming up very soon. This is all just gathering your internal internal information so you're ready when you approach the client if you're lucky enough to get them to give you a 20 minute interview and you can just put in any raw information about the campaign into chat GPT this includes your team's feedback as well as your own interview and it's gonna create a pretty nice first draft here so you can see it's following a, a great format it's got an introduction it's putting in some of those metrics you want to for sure mine the team and look at all of your historical reports back to your client about any measurable metrics that you can put in there those are incredibly important and it has bolded those which is very good you want to make sure that follows through to the formatting but you've got a pretty killer first draft and now you're ready to move on to asking the client some questions so based on this draft please create a list of questions that i can ask x client to improve this draft it says certainly here's a list of questions so you're going into that interview or you can potentially email these to a client i have never seen that work very well they're just too busy to fill out an email maybe if they're a certain uh, personality type they'll email some stuff back but i think it is more e impactful if you can just get them on a quick 20 minute call rifle through all of these questions or as many of them as are pertinent record that call transcribe the call because the next prompt here is we're going to use that interview script from the call to uh, enhance the case study so this next prompt please use the following client interview script to enhance this case study with quotes directly from the client please do not shorten or summarize any of the original draft that is in, uh, incredibly important each time you go through these chat gpt starts to get a little bit lazy and start shortening things and making things a little more concise but you lose a lot of the brilliance in that first draft so continuously reminding it not to shorten or summarize any of the original draft is important and you'll notice sometimes it still will shorten the draft. I have had examples where I've actually just kept that first draft and done my own copy and paste to improve that with the enhancements that it makes. This is just, again, dumping in that raw transcript from the client call. If for some reason ChatGPT can't handle the length of the transcript, you should try out Anthropics Claude. That particular large language model has a much larger context window. You can just put in up to, I've tested up to 20, 30 pages of transcript and copy that in or upload it as a text file along with your current draft of your case study and say, hey, please update this draft with some quotes from the client. 
So you can see here that was a fairly short transcript, but it has done a great job including these client insights, which makes this way more impactful. And this is a quick and easy way to get all of that compiled. So you can see each section here, they've added some commentary. All right. So now we're getting pretty close to an awesome draft, but we want to go even further and look for some additional research. So I've asked ChatGPT, what additional research might help improve this draft? Can you give me three simple things that my research assistant, aka Perplexity AI, is going to search the web and make this case study more impactful? So if this is too general and you just ask for some things to research, it's going to spit out way too much for you to research. So just fine tuning it into three to five simple things that you can then pump into Perplexity AI. I'm going to show you that here in a second. That will strengthen this case study. It gives you some great ideas for other research. It included here some benchmarks. So what are the benchmarks that the beverage industry faces in these different areas? That's what it's asking you to look into. And that is exactly what I put into Perplexity AI. If you are unfamiliar with Perplexity AI, I highly recommend you go check it out. I think it's one of the most unsung tools out there. You want to make sure that Copilot is on. That connects it to the internet. So this can then go out and look at current day research. So I just grabbed one of those research areas that ChatGPT said would improve that draft. I pulled that here into Perplexity AI and asked it to search the web for that. And it came back with some great data here, complete with citations, links to where this data came from. You're able to click that little clipboard and copy this back into ChatGPT. And you can see here with my next prompt, please make recommendations on how to improve the current case study using the following research. This is all just what I copied and pasted in from Perplexity AI. And when you hit that clipboard, like I showed you, it includes links to all of these citations. So you can see this number one here, citation corresponds to number one here. And you are now including some very helpful research into the case study. But what I did is I asked it to just recommend some enhancements. You don't want it rewriting the draft right away because I've noticed it'll water down the draft. It'll make it weaker each time. So I think it's helpful to just say, what edits would you recommend before it goes ahead and makes those edits? So it talks about some enhancements. And I said, okay, great, please update the case study with these enhancements. But again, do not summarize or reduce the length of the original. Make sure that all of the client's comments remain intact. That is the most important part there. So it cranked out this pretty beautiful draft. So then all you'd wanna do is copy and paste this clipboard here and pull it into a nice, beautiful template. This is just a basic template I got off of Google Slides. And you can see this is a pretty impactful case study that is nearly all completely automatic. And you can continue to refine it. You can ask for more research. There's a lot of different things you can do to improve this process, but this is the crux of the process. I've got a couple other prompts here to go through with you. If you want to adjust the tone, I suggest this Vox Script plugin. This is inside of ChatGPT installing and turning on the Vox script plugin you can take the draft that you have and say please make recommendations on how to adjust this case study draft to better match the tone and structure of this web page and then you put a link in to whatever web page you're trying to match the tone for and it will make recommendations on how to make sure that draft matches the current draft maybe it's a link to your website or if you're making this case study on behalf of somebody it can be a link to their website there's a lot of discussion around on how to improve the tone. This is really the only thing I've seen to work well is give it an example to mirror and it will do a much better job of than you trying to describe that tone. Design prompt. You might want to say, please make design recommendations based on this case study draft. Suggest layout and imagery ideas that would resonate with whoever your target audience is. And that can be something you just copy and paste, send that off with the draft to a designer and ask them to pull it together. Or if you want to do that all yourself, obviously you can do that. 
So finally, publishing and promotion. Please ge generate a list of promotion ideas specifically tailored to gaining awareness for this case study. You may want to include some information about who your target audience is there in order to get some great promo ideas out of the case study. Awesome. So I hope you got something out of this video. Again, there is a link to the cheat sheet in the description. So I highly recommend you checking that out. It has all of these prompts and it goes a lot further. There's a lot more detail in this one as far as the checklist for gathering information for that case study gives you a breakdown of every little nuance of what should be in the ideal case study. That can be helpful as you're working through this and it also includes a bunch of online guides to creating compelling case studies. So again, check out the Patreon. I've also got some coaching options in there and a lot of fun stuff. Again, I hope you got something out of this video and please feel free to like, subscribe, leave me a comment. I love hearing from you. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video.